In Mormonism, we go to great lengths to defend our beliefs. We will often twist the scriptures or the words of leaders to support whatever the current in vogue belief is. This is, of course, not how God's people should be. We should be led by the words of God instead of the opinions of men. In Mormonism, one belief that has become fully entrenched is that the Father and the Son are fully separate beings which work together towards the same purpose, with the Son being a literal spiritual, then physical offspring of the Father. This does kind of make sense when you hide everything that disagrees with the concept. It also helps to be told this a million different ways throughout the church. However, it really makes no sense at all when you finally look at the scriptures. To get this concept to work in Mormonism, though, then we have to conditionally define the words Father and God. The Father is always the Father, except when he's not, and Christ is the Father. God is always God, except when he's not, and Christ is God. After years and years of this thinking, then it becomes second nature. However, this is ultimately the core problem members of the church today have to deal with. We essentially have to deprogram ourselves from the traditions of men, even well-intentioned men. This dual thinking is very apparent in a doctrinal exposition that was published by the First Presidency and the Twelve Apostles in 1916. It has also been republished various times throughout church publications and has established the doctrinal understanding for multiple generations of members. In the exposition, it conditionally defines terms and creates entirely new, unscriptural concepts to help explain the unexplainable. This concept is also less clear because at various times, Joseph referred to God and Jesus as being separate beings. In fact, the first account of the first vision has Joseph referring to a single being. However, other accounts have Joseph stating multiple beings. Joseph also changed the Book of Mormon in 1837 to make this very issue more confusing. We should, of course, take the words of Joseph into consideration. However, we shouldn't automatically assume they are correct, especially when they seem to change over time. I think this is the fatal flaw in modern Mormonism. We assume everything Joseph did or said was God's will. However, this is not how reality works. This will be hard for some to hear. However, Joseph was wrong about some things, with the King Follett Discourse being the best example. In fact, it seems that as time progressed, Joseph increasingly separated himself from the scriptures and truth, which has directly led us to the confusing mess we have today in modern Mormonism. I certainly don't want to disparage Joseph in the slightest. However, I truly believe that he was used by God to turn the church over to Satan for their disobedience. In looking at the scriptures, I really just want to present a very simple and basic list of all the scriptures from the Book of Mormon that say that Christ is God made flesh. Of course, you can interpret these in different ways if you just change the definitions, which is what most members do today. However, the more I understand God, the more I realize that God is rather simple in his plan, in his approach, and in his work with men. Men, though, are the ones that want to complicate everything. We want to redefine, reestablish, and reinvent everything that God does into a different form so we can control it. If we just go back to the basics, then we will obtain so much more clarity than the complicated rules that organized religion provides. The following scriptures are in no particular order. There are also about 10 or 20 times more scriptures than these. However, these were chosen only for their simplicity. Mosiah 15, 1. I would that you should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men and shall redeem his people. Mosiah 13, 28. Were it not for the atonement, which God himself shall make for, their, for the sins and iniquities of his people, that they must unavoidably perish. Mosiah 13, 34. Have they not said that God himself 
should come down among the children of men and take upon him the form of man? Alma 42.15 Therefore God himself atoneth for the sins of the world to bring about the plan of mercy. Alma 11.39 Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth, and all things which in them are. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and he shall come into the world to redeem his people. Second Nephi 11.7 For if there be no Christ, there be no God, and if there be no God, we are not. For there could have been no creation, but there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. Second Nephi 10.7 Thus saith the Lord God, When the day cometh that they shall believe in me that I am Christ, then have I covenanted with their fathers that they shall be restored in the flesh. Second Nephi 26.12 and as I spake concerning the convincing of the Jews that Jesus is the very Christ, it must needs be that the Gentiles be convinced also that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God. 1 Nephi 13.40, before Joseph changed it, And shall make known to all kindreds, tongues, and people that the Lamb of God is the eternal Father. 1 Nephi 11.18 Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of God, after the manner of the flesh. 1 Nephi 11.21 Behold, the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. 1 Nephi 11.32 And I looked and beheld the Lamb of God, that he was taken by the people, yea, the everlasting God was judged of the world. Mormon 3.21 The Jews, the covenant people of the Lord, shall have other witness besides him whom they saw and heard, that Jesus whom they slew was the very Christ and the very God. Title page of the Book of Mormon And also to the convincing of the Jew and Gentile that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God, manifesting himself unto all nations. Mosiah 7, 27. He said unto them that Christ was the God, the Father of all things, and said that he should take upon him the image of man, and that God should come down among the children of men and take upon him flesh and blood and go forth upon the face of the earth. Mosiah 5, 15. I would that ye should be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in good works, that Christ, the Lord God omnipotent, may seal you his. Moroni 8, 8. Listen to the words of Christ, your Redeemer, your Lord, and your God. I think it's pretty clear from the Book of Mormon that Jesus is our Lord and our God. God himself is came down to personally reclaim his lost and fallen people. He didn't come to get a body for his eternal progression. He came down to open the way for our deliverance from death and hell. All glory goes to God for his unending love and devotion. We just have to make the decision to believe and follow him. There's not a better way to say this than what Nephi wrote. I glory in plainness, I glory in truth, I glory in my Jesus, for he hath redeemed my soul from hell. As always, thanks for figuring things out with me.